Today we'll be showing you how to configure a layer 3 VPN via MPLS on Juniper. So if you remember, this is what our lab looked like previously with our BGP labs. I added one or two items, but uh, the highlighted items here, the, those are pretty much the same as it uh, were in the BGP lab. So what I've done was I just added a CPE device on one side and another CPE device on another side. And the goal for today would be for this CPE to be able to communicate with this CPE by making use of a layer 3 VPN that runs over an MPLS network. So if you remember correctly, even if you don't, I'll just uh, link the video in the top right hand corner. So what we have here is we've got two root reflectors and we have two PE routers. So these PE routers each have a BGP session to each root reflector and that is how the routes are distributed via the network. We also have ISIS running between all these nodes on all these links even on the ones connecting the root reflectors and then this interface here is just a normal family INET interface with an IP address. We'll go over the config just now very briefly just uh, to refresh your memory. So this is the CPE so we'll just do a show configuration display set. And here you can see that I've got a security zone because this is an SRX. So I've got a security zone MPLS and this GE000 interface is in there with an IP address of 192.168.10.254. And I have a default route pointing to 192.168.10.1. So 10.1 will exist on GE002 on site router A. So then if we have a look at the CPE at site B, Show configuration display set. And here you see I've got exactly the same. Also just the security zone MPLS with that interface. And we've got all host inbound traffic system services all. This is just to allow uh, ping. I could have specified ping there, but I just wanted to add all. Then we have the same. We've got a next up of 192.168.20.1 and the local address of 192.168.20.254. Now let's have a look at our site A router config. So nothing here has changed except for this interface here that I've added. So this is just the uplink to CPE A. I'm not going to go through all of this config here. This was covered in a previous video. And then if we go back to site router B, you'll see here that we also have this GE002 interface added, which is the uplink to CPE B. Now just to make sure that we have communication, we'll just do a ping to 192.168.20.254, which is the SRX. And you can see we are getting replies. And we'll do the same on this side. I will ping 192.168.10.254. Right, so that's working. And you'll see that we aren't able to ping the other side. So if we do ping 192.168.20.254, this should not work. So what we have here is just an ISIS network with BGP running on top of it. I will just do a show ISIS adjacency, just to show you. So we've got an ISIS adjacency to site B router and then to root reflector one. And then if we do the same here, we do a show ISIS, ISIS adjacency. Then you'll see we've got to site router A and to root reflector two. Then we have BGP sessions towards these routers as well, towards the root reflectors. We don't have BGP sessions directly between these two routers. That's the whole point of a root reflector. That's pretty much uh, the gist of it. And uh, now we'll first start by enabling MPLS on our network. To enable MPLS, it's actually quite easy. There are a few components to it that you need to remember, but the config is pretty straightforward. First, we'll just go into config mode. So first, we'll go into set interfaces GE000.0, and we'll make it family MPLS. We'll do the same for GE001. Now, if you can't remember, 000 is the link between the two routers and 001 is the link towards the root reflector. So we will enable MPLS on all these backbone interfaces. We'll also enable MPLS on the loopback. So I said interfaces LO0.0 family 
MPL is. As MPL is is multi-protocol label switching, we need something that is actually capable of labeling the traffic. So there are quite a few ways you can do it. The most well-known protocol is actually LDP, which is just a label distribution protocol. You can also do it via RSVP, which is the reservation protocol, and segment routing, which you can do via ISIS. For this lab, we'll focus on LDP. So the same applies, we'll just add these interfaces to LDP. So we'll just go set protocols LDP interface GE000.0. .0. We'll do the same for GE0.1, 001.0, and the Lubeck interface, LO0.0. Then if you want to do any kind of uh, traffic engineering using the RSVP protocol, it's just easier to enable RSVP from the start so that your network is ready for it. So it's the same set protocols RSVP and we are going to specify the interfaces. So once again, 000 .0, 000 .0, 0.0, 001.0 and LO0.0, .0, which is the Lubeck interface. All right, so now we can go ahead and commit that. Now we have completed the one portion of enabling MPLS. Now this will need to be enabled on all your routers and all your backbone links, not customer facing links, but your backbone links. And luckily in our lab, these interfaces are uniform across the board. We always use 000 and 001. It's only 002 that goes to the customer. So we can actually just take this exact config and copy it on all four our routers. As you can see, I've got a small notepad here with the config already. So we'll just go to all the routers and just uh, paste this config. I'm going to fast forward this process. I'm just going to do it in the lab so you can skip ahead if you don't want to watch this. I'm just going to go ahead and paste this config on all the routers. All right, so now that that is done, what you can do to verify is you can do a run show LDP neighbor to make sure that all your interfaces where you have LDP enabled actually form a neighborship. And then you can also do a run show LDP session. So the LDP neighbor will be on the physical interfaces and the LDP session, you'll see the Lubeck address there. And what you want to look for is operational open. Right, and you can just uh, verify this on all your routers. So we'll go run show LDP session. Got that one correct. Run show LDP session. That one's working as well. And lastly, router B, run show LDP session. Right, so our LDP is up and running. One way you can actually test is you can do an MPLS LDP ping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate a ping from the Lubeck of router A towards the Lubeck of router B using MPLS. And you do that by doing a run ping MPLS LDP 172.16.0.2, which is the Lubeck of router B. And we can just use our source interface as 172.16.0.1. And if you see exclamation marks, it means that LDP ping is working. Now it is possible for LDP ping to work in one direction and not the other. So I'd suggest you run this ping towards multiple loopbacks and then also from multiple loopbacks to ensure that your LDP is working across your whole network. All right, and the next step is you need to configure your routing instance. So we'll just go into edit routing instances. So a routing instance is exactly where your interface will reside that will be part of your layer three VPN. So for this one, we'll just name it L3 VPN and we're gonna make it instance type VRF. So instance type VRF. So VRF means virtual routing and forwarding instance. All right, so now we can just go back in there. The next thing you want to do is set the interface that'll belong to this routing instance. In our case, it'll be GE002, so 002.0, right? And if we do a show, that's basically our config for now. What you need to do now is you need to configure root targets and root distinguishers. I'm not going to go into too much detail exactly what all that means but I'll just show you a quick example. So first we'll set root distinguisher. And for this one, I'd like to use the local Lubeck address 172.16.0.1, followed by the AS number 65535. 
This just makes it easier to identify which router you are learning specific routes from. So if we configure the same routing instance on router B, this will just change to 172.16.0.2. The route distinguisher does not need to be the same on both sides of your MPLS network, but the VRF target should. So we'll do set VRF target. And this one, I'm gonna do a question mark here just to show you the format. So let's just do a set VRF target and press enter. Let's try that, there we go. So if you type in something that it doesn't like, then it'll show you exactly what format to use. So target colon X colon Y. So X is the AS number followed by an optional L or an IP address and Y is a number. Right, so what I'd like to do just for ease of use is we'll set VRF target target colon and for you I'm going to 65535 which is my AS number and I'm going to use the service ID that I want to use for this routing instance. In this example we'll just use 01 this will be accepted. So VRF target needs to be the same on both sides. Then the next thing we want to do is set VRF table label. So set VRF table label. Now let's do a show you. Let's see if we've got everything looks like it. So let's do a commit. If you do run into any issues with your commit, what you can do is just go top edit chassis, you can do a show you, and you just need to enable network services IP. All right, so now we're just going to copy this routing instance config to the other router with uh, just changing a few parameters. So we'll do exactly this. And what we'll do is we'll just uh, copy this into a notepad here. And we'll just change this one to dot two because the router where we are going to enable the other point of this layer three VPN resides on 172.16.0.2, which is site router B. The rest of the config can stay the same. So we'll just go there, site router B, and we can paste the config here. All right, and we can do a commit. Did we commit on here? I don't think we did, we do a commit. So now one thing that you will notice is that you won't be able to run ping 192.168.10.254 anymore. It'll say no route to host. So now you have to specify the routing instance, layer three VPN, right? If we do a run show route table, we type in the name of the layer three VPN that we just got uh, created which is L3 VPN. Here you can see our interface resides in this VRF or this routing instance and the route resides in there as well. We can just verify the same on this side. We do a run show root table L3 VPN. You can see that the interface IP and the slash 24 root is now part of this root table. Right, so let's go to CPE site A. Let's see if we can actually ping 192.168.20.254 and we are not able to. Right, so the reason for that is you're not done yet with your MPLS config. What you need to do is you need to go into edit protocols, BGP. If we do a show here, you'll see that we have this group here. And in this group, you need to specify family INET and family INET VPN. Family INET VPN should suffice for our lab, but I'm just gonna add as many family INETs or families as I can, because the moment you change it, your BGP will actually flap. So it's just uh, better to add all the families from scratch, rather than you having to realize later on when your network is actually fully up operational, that you need additional families, you configure it and your BGP flaps. So how you do that is you go edit, group and then this one it's uh, our IBGP service group we can just say f set family inet any set family inet vpn any and for future use when we configure layer 2 vpns we can just set family l2 vpn signaling we're not going to make use of the l2 vpn signaling in uh, this lab we'll only focus on the inet vpn but i'm just going to add l2 vpn signaling anyway so we do a commit 
So this BGP config needs to be on all your routers participating in BGP as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. Once again, I'm going to fast forward the video a little bit, but I just want to show you how it's done. I've got my little script here as well. So this will be configured on all the routers and then the iBGP clients one will be configured on the root reflectors. Because remember, we've got two groups on the root reflectors. So just a quick note, I made a spelling mistake with the signaling. It's a single L, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste this on both root reflectors. And then the service portion, I'm just going to copy and paste onto the site B router. So now if we do a run show BGP summary, you'll see that our BGP actually flapped. It's only up for 10 seconds to this one and six seconds to this neighbor. But now you can see we are actually learning a BGP layer three VPN route from both root reflectors. So from 254, we've got an active route and from 172.16.0.255, we also have a route, but it's not an active route. The reason for that is that both these routes we are learning will be the exact same route. We'll show that just now. So if we do a run show route table, table L3 VPN INET. So now you'll see that we have the local interface and the local route as well, the direct route. And now we are learning 192.168.20.0 slash 24 via BGP towards a router to we can just verify the same on site router B. We do a run show root table L3 VPN INET. Right, and the same is happening on this side. So what we can do is we can do a run show root receive protocol BGP and we can specify the neighbor 172.16.0.254 and it'll actually tell you which root it is learning. So you can see it's learning 192.168.10.0/24, and the next stop is 172.16.0.1, which is 100% correct, which is this router's loopback address. Now, to make sure that our MPLS is working or our layer 3 VPN over MPLS, so layer 3 VPNs are typically incorrectly referred to as MPLS connections. Layer 3 VPNs in this format actually runs over an MPLS network. Layer 2 VPNs like eVPN and VPLS, they also run over an MPLS network. So it is important to correctly distinguish between what is an MPLS network and what is a Layer 3 VPN. Right, so let's see if our uh, Layer 3 VPN is working. So from this uh, CPE, we'll do a ping 192.168.20.254, which is the CPE's IP address on the other side. And you can see that it is working correctly. So now we'll just go to CPE site B and we'll just do the same test. And just to make sure that uh, it is working as expected both sides. So we'll just do a ping 192.168.10.254. And you can see that it is working. All right, so what have we accomplished in this lab? We've managed to enable MPLS on our backbone network here. And then we've set up a layer three VPN between CPE site A and CPE site B. If you add additional routers to the network and they also need to form part of the same layer 3 VPN, then you can just replicate the config and add another CPE to another PE and they will then form part of the same layer 3 VPN. All right, and uh, that's it for this video. In our next one, we'll cover how to set up a VPLS and eVPN, which are layer 2 technologies via MPLS. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you guys in the next one.